forgive them for making Luke Skywalker drink breast milk. I'll never forgive him for that. <laughs> <laughs> never. All right, so thank you for joining us today on the Nerd Psycho Comic Flick Show, where we will never forgive uh, anybody for making Luke Skywalker drink breast milk. Welcome, everybody, to today's show. Uh, it's not about Star Wars, though. We're not going to talk about Star Wars again. It's a habit we're trying to break with Trenton. Uh, welcome to the show. I am SC Hitch, and we are here with another episode of the Nerd Psycho Comic Flick Show. This week, I am going to be uh, joined by, as always, D.P. Brown, Michael, and Trenton is going to be joining us from uh, Carbonite Bounty BS. He's a special guest. Thank you for coming on to talk about this uh, redo. And in the spirit of redos, D.P. Brown, why don't you tell all of our very, very loyal listeners where they can find us if they don't know already, and they do. But tell them anyway. Nerdcyclopedia.com, people. Make sure that you are going to our website, clicking on our links, and um, subscribing to our social media um, outlets at Nerdcyclopedia. We are on Twitter, Facebook, and also on Instagram. We can also get um, your feedback and everything right on our, um, you know, right on our site on Facebook at Nerdcyclopedia. Also, um, make sure that you are leaving us some feedback on emails, nerds at nerdcyclopedia.com. Subscribe to us if you're watching YouTube and even on Facebook. Make sure you're hitting that notification button, too. So anytime that we're on that, you know, you know that we're on. Also, make sure that you are subscribing to your podcast on oh. Apple um, Podcasts, Google Play, um, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Stitcher, anywhere that you listen to podcasts, we are there. That's right. We haven't we they haven't kicked us off yet, probably because they don't realize we're there. Uh, <laughs> guys, this is one of those sh one of those uh, episodes that is uh, kind of a long time coming. This is the Snyder Cut of Justice League, which was rumored when the original Whedon Cut came out, and much like a a former Oklahoma State. Uh, a quarterback uh, that movie has certainly showed its age right away uh, which is <laughs> which I guess nobody remembers Brandon Whedon uh, which is fine with me uh, I'm gone. gentlemen I'm gone. gentlemen, gentlemen uh, before we start uh, we're going to say one nice thing about this movie one nice thing before we get into anything because I just feel like after listening to our uh, previous review of Justice League from before we should start <clears throat> out with something nice so I'm going to say that I, I really feel like you know the Steppenwolf plot made a lot more sense to me <laughs> like i understood what he was trying to do and why and that made me happy because i got it uh what about you michael what do you think one thing nice about this movie yes one uh, mandatory the, the, thing the, the the fight scenes were more dramatic and involved it, it, it brought me it brought me in more nice nice what do you think trend one one nice thing one nice thing about this movie uh the fact that they had gal gadot as wonder woman that's the only nice thing I can say about it. <laughs> All right. The DP, how about you? What's what's one nice thing you can say about the movie? Cyborg. He was very, very well developed in this movie. And his character was pretty much not seen, you know, too much in the other one. This just was a whole a 180 from what we um, didn't see before. You know, I got to say, that's a good place to start for us. Because when I, I when I listened to our, our podcast from before... I was struck by how little, how like little investment we had in Cyborg because he was such a big part of this movie. And obviously they didn't reshoot all those scenes, right? So they had, you know, they had this stuff sitting around on the cutting board. And it's funny because, because one of the things we remarked about was just that the actor who plays Cyborg just didn't seem like he liked his job. And it's funny that in the years that since that's come out that he hated working with Joss Whedon. So all those scenes were like, you know, he hated the director. And it really comes out that this, you know, if not for nothing else, my my real nice thing is that this is like a fun movie. I had a pretty fun time watching this movie, uh, and not just for the schlock value. Uh, it, it was like entertaining, and that is something that the previous Justice League was not. Uh, although it did have a little bit of littering, yeah. you know, like that. <laughs> All right, so now let's start talking about. <clears throat> Let's, let's open with the Joker, with Jared Leto, the Joker. Now, Trenton, you have some strong feelings about this, so I'm just going to kind of back off. I mean, and I don't know, me and Mike kind of set it together. I mean, I just, it, it, I'm, I'm glad it was in the epilogue and not in the movie. I mean, it just, it didn't make sense. Uh, when they were showing the trailers leading up to it, I was expecting him to be more involved or to get, to get that doomsday scene, like a flashback, but I, I didn't understand it. It seemed kind of childish and petty, like the back and forth about, you know, people they've killed and what they've caused. So I, that was a part that it was like a big turnoff to me. I liked the way he looked. I thought the character was a little more believable, but... The, the scene, you know, that, that definitely needed to be cut for me. I didn't like it at all. 
I, I totally agree with you, Trent. Like, we, yeah, we mentioned this before. It was just like, at least we said it was like in the epilogue, so it wasn't part of the movie. It didn't take away from the movie itself. I mean, after four hours, you're stretching by that point in time, and you're just waiting for it to end. Uh, but I do agree with you. Like, the Joker was better representative because he didn't have the, the face tattoo so much. So it was like, it was a more believable Joker and a more sensible Joker. But, I mean, how, how much do you have to keep saying, oh, I killed Robin, I killed Robin. I mean, you, like, it's like 30 years, there's apocalypse going on. You're going to bring up, you're killing Robin when <laughs> millions of people are dying. Like, it, it's it's a senseless interaction between the two. Yeah. And I don't know, because we'll probably never see where it was going to lead to. Mm-hmm. You know, so we're kind of just stuck with that. A little bit of dry pie, right? And that's that's right. a funny thing about the context here is that man, you know, this movie actually came out before Suicide Squad. So, if you act, if this had come out this way at that time, what do you guys think about like how would this have led into Suicide Squad? Would you have been like because I think that a lot of our reaction to Jared Leto in this role right now is tied up into our reaction to that movie. So for me, I'm thinking like you know, if this if there had never been a Suicide Squad would you have enjoyed his performance anymore? Or are you thinking that, you know, it's all lead up to a performance you already don't like and it's just kind of like, yeah. I was never um, opposed to Jared Leto, you know, Leto's Joker. I mean, I liked him in Suicide Squad. I just think that they didn't have enough of him. I thought that um, he should have been the main villain instead of whatever crap that they, you know, had as a villain in that movie. You know, I mean, if you want to have the Joker, we're talking about like the second most popular comic book villain, you know, of all time, if not the number one, and you're going to have him relegated to um just like number two in the Suicide Squad, he needs to be the main villain in that movie, which you would have had a lot more of Jared Leto doing, you know, his work. I mean, as you as I hear, you know, he had some pretty good stuff that was left on the cutting floor and studio warner brothers again you know just cutting stuff out and you know mandating this and that um you just got what it was i mean jared leto's a great actor so i mean i mean what 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 else what else what else you gonna do yeah he definitely got into his character the joker and you know just like you said in the suicide squad he definitely should have been a main villain as opposed to having half of his scenes cut on the floor what is it with these people that have these DC characters and don't know what to do with them? Why is it that that like you can get a fifth tier Marvel character like the Scarlet Witch and you can have Marvel put out, you know, WandaVision, which is like genre bending. It's ridiculously postmodern and, and intelligent. And DC has literally I mean, literally in this movie, they have Zeus. Zeus like uh, like this is the level of characters they're dealing with it's not just mythological in the sense of Superman as a mythology it's literally mythology and it seems like they don't really understand what drives these characters you know what I mean Zeus is actually a DC character in the comic books. Oh right. I oh, know. I'm not saying it's like BS. Oh, okay. not, I wasn't I wasn't criticizing yeah, I mean, that. I'm saying, Come on, right, you know, right, right, right. Okay. No, no. That's that's totally <laughs> legit. It's cool. <laughs> I'm cool with it. Okay. I'm just saying like like this is literally a pantheon of gods. Like DC is a pantheon of gods. Marvel's a little bit yeah. different. They're like people. Right. It's just a different a different vibe. And and it seems weird that we've had a lot of different directors take a shot at this. And you know, who are the people that have actually gotten gotten DC right? Well, you have what? You have um, Chris Nolan. Mm-hmm. And you uh-huh. have, if we want to be really, nice, I would say Tim Burton because the first two they were really good. The first two were yeah. really good. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. beyond that, I mean. There's this is maybe the next best of those movies. Is that do you guys feel like that's maybe the, the case? Is this the, like the uh, next one, like the next tier after those f- like five movies? Well, four movies and then Bat, you know, Dark. You know, the, the last one wasn't that great. You just but named two ones. directors who have directed one character. No other DC <laughs> character. They just directed one, one character. That's true. And that was the Batman. Okay. You know, it's almost hard not to mess up Batman unless you're like um sh- uh, shoemaker. You know. <laughs> Rest, rest in peace and everything um but it's is it, the the way the way the way they work as far as dc you know uh we was talking about off mic i mean they had these characters for own these characters all these years they own all their characters marvel didn't even own all their characters they farmed them out you know a long time ago to different studios and stuff and we're lucky to even have iron man thor captain america um, and like a lot of those characters Hulk come back into the fold, whereas DC has, you know, ownership of all their characters and still doesn't know what the heck to do with them, you know? 
Um, it took a Kevin Feige. It took one person to actually see like the the heart in the um the 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 potential that you know characters actually have to really to 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 bring them you know bring them about. And as much as Zack Snyder has a passion and actually sees like the vision of like you know these as gods and stuff, you know he has a penchant of overdoing stuff. He wasn't the right. He's not a Kevin Feige. He's just a director. You know, Feige is not a director. He's an overseer you know, a grand producer who's able to see the grand vision of things. And DC doesn't necessarily have to be like a MCU or, you know, uh, Marvel, but they should have a, a overall plan with these characters. They got too many chefs in the, co- in, the, in, the, in the kitchen trying to cook these characters. And it's a hot mess. Right, like, yeah. Just as you say, you know, you know, you have the overseer and you have phases. Marvel has phases. So, and that's like, you know, you got your phase one and phase two, you the introduction of the characters, who's the characters, you know, bringing together of the characters. Let's, let's bring them all together after after we introduce all these characters. And I mean, that's what Marvel did well, because, I mean, Iron Man was not a popular, you know, not at all. You know, he was not a popular person. But you now knew Iron Man was you anywhere. Nerd, right. Like you, that was like, like, if you knew Tony Stark, like if that name meant something to you in 2003, you were like yeah. a huge nerd. Right. Yep. Right. Yeah, you just saw him in comic books and like maybe a cartoon here or there, but he wasn't. And you get yeah, confused whether he's Tony Stark or Forge. They're like the same dude, right? And that's how that's how I always. Go and even it. a cartoon wasn't that popular, so I mean, right. they really thought a Iron Man movie was going to work. They took a huge gamble on that, and it scored like blockbuster. So what? Where should we? Where should we rank? Like where should? We, so I feel like when we talk about DC uh cinematic universe up to this point it's fair to compare it to phase one of the marvel universe because they never really got to phase two this is like what would have happened if avengers had been made with that captain america from 1991 sort of aesthetic where it was all plastic and and aluminum uh it would have looked terrible and it would have bombed and we wouldn't have gotten any of the movies that are like the gata demerong or the wagner you know what i mean these crazy like we're gonna eliminate half of half of all life you know what i mean we never would have got there if it had failed and so when we compare like justice league to that it's almost like you want to look at like wonder woman and you want to look at aquaman and you want to look at at those movies but they happen after this right so it's almost like this is this feels like what what dc wants to do is they want to say look from here back was one thing and it's done right it was one thing it's its own thing this is the cap of it right because this feels like the the real you know the real conclusion to that arc and now they can move forward which is exactly what I said Disney was trying to do with the Star Wars sequel trilogy, which I know Trenton loves so much. <laughs> nah, but uh, I know I, I definitely agree with what you guys are saying. I mean, it's just like I, I just think it's like the Apple and Samsung debate. It's, it's a rat race that you know Warner Brothers, you know, decided to do these DC stories and they rushed them. I mean, all these movies. And the sad thing about this, we discussed off the camera. The Zack Snyder story is sad because. The guy maybe could have made a better movie. He needed six months off because a family member died and they didn't want to give it to him. So they decided to go another direction. I mean, I don't like the idea of releasing a, you know, a group movie, kind of like an Avenger style without backstory, because what he was trying to do in this movie is, is do five movies in one, which it never would have worked. I mean, and this is four hours. There's still stuff missing. So how was he going to cut this movie? How was he going to edit it to make it two and a half hours? There is no way to edit this movie. Yeah, it was, so, I mean, it was, it, it was a dumpster fire from the start. It's um to 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 focus on the movie itself. I'm I'm not gonna lie. It, it was a much better movie than what we seen mm-hmm. when oh, 2017 yeah. when it oh, came out. Sure. You know, much more coherent. You know, the fight scenes were a lot. You know, as, as Michael was saying, you know, a lot better. Um, the the pacing. I mean, even though we get a lot of slow mo, the pacing, <laughs> the pacing, the pacing was way better than what I've remember. You know, the Josh Whedon, you know, version and everything. So you could took a lot more time with the characters. I appreciate the fact, even though it's four hours long and everything, I appreciate the fact that he did spend time with the characters that we didn't really get in their individual movies, like Wonder Woman, Batman, and um, Superman. Um, you know, so we we didn't even get Superman until like two hours into the movie and three. everything. Three hours, into the movie. <laughs> three hours, three hours into, into the movie. movie. Oh yeah, they God. go. They're like, we're gonna take the mother box to Superman and his ship. And I was like, I looked at the clock and I was like, <laughs> they haven't gotten there yet. <laughs> this is you a know? Superman movie, right? Oh man, 
But um, I, like I said, I really appreciate the the uh, cyborg, you know, background and everything uh, that really had me, you know, going and stuff. I really, really love them and scared though. You know, I really love like the the. Maybe it's just me harking back to his 300 days because I really did like, you know, 300 in the way, you know, he had that look. It's the same look that he gave like the, um, you know, those Warren females and stuff. Now, when Patty Jenkins did her thing, it's a whole different, you know, vibe and stuff. But I, I would be really interested to see what a, a, a Zack Snyder Themyscira movie looks like. You know, it may not be had the best story, but, you know, it's it's, it's something to um to, to see. But um, also, I love the extended um, flashback story with the Green Lantern, mm. um, you know, Zeus yeah. um, dark side we're seeing for the first time there. You know, I love those scenes. Zack Snyder does such a great epic battle scene and everything. So you cannot take that away from him. Um, but yeah, as far as being better paced, much better paced. Um, I did not like the flash scene. You know, I thought that still could have been excised the whole um, as soon as he runs out the um, the, the the store, you know, he start playing his music. Oh, my goodness. When he does his. <laughs> He's got a slow mo say virus. He he got a, like he, a, it was like a Quicksilver from uh, the X-Men movie. Remember? Yeah. Yep. Time uh, in a bottle. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was out of time. And plus, I always hated the flash effects in the way he runs. I, the best speedster thing was what they did in the X-Men uh, Days of Future Past and, um, you know, with, with that Quicksilver and stuff. Um, but I didn't I didn't like that. But anytime he introduces one of the, the, the like Aquaman or Flash or Cyborg, we get this music video. Yeah, yeah, we you get know this. when Wonder Woman's coming because the, the, the harking of the angels you the, are coming. You hear the drums start to bang in the background. And... <laughs> oh! Yeah, 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 yeah. You're just yeah, looking around like, yeah. oh, where is she? Where is she? <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm not going to say I didn't like this movie, but as it went on, it went on for me, you know. And then you guys were talking about the end scene, the nightmare scene. Um, I could see why he put it in there. Because essentially, you know, he got a little greedy. You know, he really wanted Jared Leto to meet Ben Affleck's Batman. It's just he could not find any type of way to justify it within the regular, you know, story of what, what actually happened in like the before the epilogue and everything. So he created this whole nightmare scene that doesn't really make a lot of sense. But if you play like the video Injustice, game, Injustice Games, um, it sort of like makes sense in that aspect. So I'm guessing that, you know, Superman turns evil, you know, um, Lex Luthor is probably going to come back from another dimension and stuff like he does in that, you know, the video game series. And here we get, we're getting a, um, a Joker that Batman actually talks to, you know. Um, so that part made a little bit of sense to me. It didn't make any sense in the context of the movie itself, but it made sense to me or what they wanted, what Zack Snyder wanted to do. And then you guys were talking about Martian Manhunter and how you liked him. <laughs> no, 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 no. Here he is. Okay, like what? What part do you yeah, not like what? him talking to Lois Lane? Are the, are, that, did you not like him at the end talking to Bruce Wayne? The both, both, yeah. both, 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 both. So, 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 you guys ever watch Supergirl? Yeah. Okay. So I think the effects to Martian Manhunter in this movie were so much less lesser than than what they did in Supergirl. You know, I mean, I, I think what they did in Supergirl was, you know, a lot better and had the character a lot more established. To me, he just felt like an add-on. Yep. If you're going to have Martian Manhunter, have him with the group. He just felt like he was just, okay, I'm here. You know, he's a, he's a original Justice League member, you know, for the most part. He just felt like an add-on that was just not meant to be there. And then I'm reading, like, you know, interviews, actually, you know, in the end, um, it was supposed to be Ryan Reynolds Green Lantern that was talking to Bruce Wayne at the end, you know, but they couldn't, you know, they uh, Warner Brothers again didn't want to, um, you know, let him do anything, you know, so he had to settle with um, with Martian Manor. And no, I didn't. I don't think I that, that that scene with him talking to Lois really made sense to me, you know, and really being um, I mean, defended. So where is Martha <laughs> then? So, right? so you're where saying is before she? our movie, you're to cut things out then. I mean, Say it again. Martha was literally the whole the, the whole plot of the last movie yeah, exactly. turned on Martha. The whole plot, Martha. And, and she shows up and for like five seconds, and now it was only two seconds because she actually wasn't in that scene. That doesn't make any sense. You're right, Clark. Ryan Reynolds, Greenlander. 
please never bring that up again on a show I'm on. Yeah. Because it was such a, a such a waste of so much potential. Because that probably was the right casting for Hal for for Hal Jordan. It probably was correct, and it should have been good. But it and Green Lantern should be badass, he's the, right? He's not the person. He has the look of him of Hal Jordan. It, his personality. He's he's Deadpool. That's what yeah. Well, okay. There, there's nobody else but Deadpool for him. He's a Deadpool. nobody else but Deadpool. Yeah. But what if he's Deadpool say, you know, being? But he could also. We can feel canonically that he's Deadpool playing this part, not Ryan Reynolds, right? We can feel that. Um, yeah. Head Cannon's a, one, a wonderful thing. A wonderful right. That's like mean, trying to yeah. say Scott Evans is Johnny Storm. No, that doesn't, matter. <laughs> oh, it doesn't well. work that way. Yeah. Yeah, Chris, <laughs> Chris Evans, Evans is, is definitely... Captain America. <laughs> that is America's ass, and it's not because of the Fantastic Four. I'll tell you, you know, But DP, you bring up a big point, though. You know, Warner Brothers and DC have a big issue, and it's with The Flash, because I don't like his character. Green Lantern is a legacy member. They can't get him right. And Martian Manhunter, I mean, I, I like the scene. I know you don't like it. I didn't like his costume. I He didn't have the two tassels, his cape. So the costume was a little off, but I liked him in the movie. I get why they put him on there as a teaser for the next one, but it's one of them things. It should have been like a Justice League prologue because the Justice League doesn't exist yet. So I think the bonus scene of him being on there is right, but I didn't like the suit. I like the character, but not the suit. Yeah, and I agree with that too. Like I like the original suit way so right. much better. And I like I would have liked to have like the more green fluorescent head. Right. Yeah. Uh, would have yeah. looked nicer yeah. too. Yeah. But um I agree, maybe the part in the movie where he's Martha, maybe you know, but the end part, I mean, again, it goes to he's setting up other things and that's a good way to set things up because I mean you expecting another movie and that's when you can introduce him. Because if you try to introduce a backstory of Mar- Martian Manhunter. Now you got a five-hour movie ahead of you. So, 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 would have been better for him not to even show up at all in yes. the Martha scene and just have him in the back end. Which, I mean, I mean, not that you guys oh, talk about it, would have made a lot more sense as a yeah. teaser. But you know, the back end, it, that back just, end you know, scene is so like, like a nerd thing. Like, oh my god, Martian Manhunter! Oh my god, yeah. let's let's mm-hmm. get excited for it. So here, but yeah, I mean, in the movie scene, yeah, it it makes so much more sense at the end of the movie. I guess they just want to introduce him, like, hey, he's been this general the whole time. You know, Ooh, and, 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 and that him being that doesn't make any sense from going from Man of Steel to um to to Superman. I mean, to Batman versus Superman to this. All of a sudden, he's been Martian Manhunter the whole time. I I don't I don't I don't. <laughs> you got to explain that 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 uh, how that how that just works. I mean, I, I we we talk about retcon and this stuff, but come on now. Well, this is so, this is postmodern in a way that that uh, a success can't be, right? Because what we are talking about right now is set up that was put into this movie in the year 2021 to set up movies that we all know for a fact will never be made, ever. I wouldn't right? say never. Don't yeah, say never. Say That's never, true. Man. That's true. Right? Yeah. We know they're, they're under the current dollars. circumstances and as long as there's no deep fakes involved, guys, <laughs> They're probably not, not going to make these movies. They're not actually teasing Martian Manhunter 2023. They're not actually teasing... They have another Batman already. It's like it's done. That, you know that, what I mean? You know, Scott, you could be wrong, though. I mean, he might have put those in there to force a Warner Brothers hand for him to make another movie. That's not. That's, a, that's exactly what he did, um, Michael. That's exactly yep. what he did. He's now, forcing the hand. Now, that's, what, um, that's why we have a 10-minute long epilogue with him and the Joker, because people now want to see that. So it, it's a, I don't know if I want to, but um, but <laughs> hey, if if they if you they go see for what it, happened. how did we get to this point? We gotta we yeah. gotta know, Sam. We it, gotta know what happened. It, it, I think they're gonna do another one because you gotta see the dollars that they made off of HBO Max on this movie compared to what they made on the original. They're gonna do another one regardless. Yeah, they're gonna have to find a way to settle it, but I, I guarantee we'll see Dark Side. Well, they definitely made back their seventy million dollars. I mean, that's for yeah. sure. That's like pe- oh. peanuts on what they made from HBO Max. That's what. Yeah. <clears throat> that's like six million people. I think they did. They outdid that. I mean, did, right. did you I mean, see that China just their HBO Asia just shut down last night from this movie? Did they release it last night? Oh wow! They really? They couldn't even watch it. It shut. Yeah, it crashed. Oh, that many wow. people watch it over there. Asia, there's oh, a wow. lot. Of, Asia, there's a lot of people. Um, yeah. hey guys, we're gonna be right back. We're gonna take a quick intermission. We're gonna we're gonna let you hear about a show we love called. Uh, Carbonite Bounty BS. And you're going to hear from one of us in just a second. So stay tuned and we'll be right back. And when we come back, we are going to talk about something that I really like in this movie, and that is Dark Side. So we'll be right back after these messages. Uh, don't go anywhere, especially if you're in your, in your car, because if it's moving, don't jump out. All right, we'll be back. 
Hey everyone, it's Trent from Carbonite Bound ABS with the Nerds here, and I just want to invite everybody watching and listening to check out Carbonite Bound ABS as one of our other shows we offer. It's a fun show that we talk all things Star Wars. Um, we go from cartoons like The Clone Wars and Rebels all the way to the movies, sequel to prequel, and current trilogy. So, I mean, definitely a good read for everybody and something to definitely check out here on Nerdcyclopedia. And we're back. Thank you, Trenton, for uh, helping us uh, let the people know about our other show, Carbonite Bounty BS. And I promised we were going to talk about Dark Side right now, so guess what we're going to do? We're going to talk about Dark Side. I love this inclusion in this movie. It made this so much better to actually have Dark Side 1 on Earth at the beginning of the movie, and 2, look staring at the proceedings, right? All of this made this movie so much better to me. I liked the big bad introduction. Uh, I liked the uh, pre Thanos Thanos. Everybody knows Dark Side's older. <clears throat> right. Everybody knows that. What'd you guys think about this inclusion to this uh, window into apocalypse? What'd you guys think about? What'd you yeah. think, Michael? Oh, I absolutely agree with you, Hitchens. I mean, by one hundred percent. I mean, having him in that movie, just alone, the, the the fight scene with him and Zeus, and just that whole fight scene is so much better with him in it, and uh, just showing him in depth and showing apocalypse. You know, showing at least some scenes from apocalypse and showing what kind of desolate land that is and mm. you know and actually seeing uh his obima ray shoot down in, in underwater as well too him just uh, you know killing everybody as much as fast as he can it, it was just a, a perfect inclusion to have him in this movie so it, it definitely worked it definitely played and it actually gave more character to steppenwolf as well too to actually have him showing him why he's doing this instead of just screaming out Oh, mother, mother, tell me why I have to do this, mm -hmm. you know, and, you know, so it has a better inclusion and it fits better with the story as well, too. So what do you think, Trent? Oh, I'm, I'm on board. I mean, I really like his character. I like the the theming of him. His costume is excellent. The voice. I mean, he was sinister. He was what, you know, and we'll always draw these parallels, even though it's not part of the show. But he was what I thought Thanos should have been. I mean, I didn't like the grimacy purple Thanos. but <laughs> I like, I, I mean, this guy, he looks scary. And I, I like the DC theming of their movies as they're darker. They're more believable to me. The, Disney's, you know, Marvel's kind of, I don't know, lighter. The tones are lighter. The theming's lighter. So I really like Dark Side in this. Um, and the, the weird part is, is if you look at the parallels of all these fight scenes, this cut was made back in 2017. But you're not going to tell me that nobody on that board told Disney. Because if you look at things in this movie, why is it showing up in all the Infinity Wars? The stab in the shoulder with Thanos. The fight scene was the final one. I mean, doesn't this, like, look parallel to you? Because it's the same scenes, literally. If you cut them and look at them, it's the same movies. It's yeah, weird. Absolutely. Yeah, It's agreed. weird how they know the same. it's the same movie, cut differently. I I mean, the, the Thanos and Darkseid are pretty much the same character, you know, for the most part. I mean, really, the, these characters are pretty much mirrors of each other. I mean, right. you got DC, you know, Batman is, is Iron Man in the Marvel Universe and everything. And Captain America is Superman, you know, but without powers and stuff, you know. Um, so they pretty much mirror stuff, you know, that the other stuff does because they were in competition for so many years. One has to one up the other and stuff, you know, dark side um, in this movie, he, he was okay to me. Um, I wish he could have been in there a whole lot more instead of us seeing like um, Steppenwolf pretty much whining to him the whole time. But I understand like, as, as Michael was saying, you know, it gave mu a much better characterization of why Steppenwolf was how he was. He wanted to get back into the good graces of dark side. You know, so he was willing to do anything to get back into, you know, whatever happened on 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 Apocalypse to to fall out of Dark Side's graces. Uh, we got to see Decide. You know, I don't remember seeing Decide and and um or whoever yeah. he was talking to in in um in the um 2017 movie. So we got to see that. We got to see you know Apocalypse um in a movie. So that was great to see. So I'm kind of really interested to see more of that. You know, in the future. Uh, I just wish, you know, with the dark side, we could have got a little, I wish he could have been the main villain instead of Steppenwolf, because I've never really been a big Steppenwolf fan, um, so I'm not really sure why Zach chose to have him as the, Sequel, um, sequel, Sam. I, I, I understand. You can't have dark side in the first movie with Thanos in the first Avengers? No. <laughs> no I mean, he was involved with the action in that movie, and they showed him at the end, Michael. 
<laughs> right. Sequel, Te- Sam. Teaser. Technically, I mean, but uh, but if if they were going to rush, uh, you know, having you know these guys come together, I mean, why not? Why would you want to wait to have Dark Side in a sequel that may have not that that you were that job you security? <laughs> yeah. Plot. Right. It's plot armor for the director. No, it's like, I, I totally agree. Yeah, yeah. Mike's Mike's one hundred percent right though. They couldn't put him in the first one. I mean, because look, it it took Job gods security. to beat him. These, these heroes, these heroes aren't gods though. So it took mm. gods to to kill him and drive him back. And these are just heroes. They're not going to be able to kill him. They're going to need six, eight, <laughs> maybe ten different characters to even, you know. I can I can appreciate kind of that. All right. Yeah, I, you I got you got to get Martian Manhunter and Green Lantern out there to be able to kill uh, to kill yeah. Dark Side. Yeah. Yeah. You need these other characters. You can't throw Dark Side in the first movie. Okay. Now you're now you're, you're already wasted doomsday. I mean, come on, <laughs> what else is gonna have? Where's a uh, hot girl at? Yeah, we we she's we, on we, the WB. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we we don't. You can't. Um, you don't get to go from the WB directly to HBO Max. There's no right. there's no way. <laughs> there's, you don't there's scale a, there's like a that. Yeah, you you can't just do do one season on the you know a couple seasons on the WB and go up. You have right. to at least have some sort of limited series. Uh, <laughs> You know, th- if, this, you're, this, if you're written off Legends of Tomorrow, you know you you gotta you gotta wait your turn. <laughs> like, I I liked how they portrayed his him harvesting that radiation that he can just use the energy and that's what they did. Like that made a lot of sense. Like, oh, it's not it's toxic. Great, that'll piss everyone off. Like, I mean, all that <laughs> stuff made sense now because because Dark Side was there. He wasn't just screaming at the mother boxes like you said. I I, I liked the effect of 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 Dasad and Dark Side in the liquid molten metal. You know what I mean? In that uranium or whatever it was. You know that slag at the center of this uh, Chernobyl. I, right. I, I really like that effect where it was like fire in the eyes and in the mouth. Ah, oh, super yeah. cool. I don't know. The Zod kind of reminded me of the um, the the um, the guy from the second hand from um, the Flash. So not the Flash. Um, Flash Gordon, <laughs> and the, the little robot guy who dies. You know, who's, um, <laughs> Zod. Okay. Not Zod's friend, but uh, General whatever. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> my favorite thing is that he like goes to get dark side but we find out that dark side obviously has been standing there literally the whole time just standing right there <laughs> he's like i'll be right back i've got to get the boss and he's like <laughs> <laughs> coming to coming yeah. to the zoom call we were on the right? phone with um right. we were stepping like, I'm not home. I'm not home. <laughs> i don't want to go on camera i'm not wearing pants <laughs> it's like it's like it's ridiculous that's how that's how they get the human the human like life problem things and like Marvel does who, so well. That's how who was that. the uh, who was the humanoid that, uh, that follows around uh, Dark Side? I, I don't know. The oh, Granny Goodness. Granny, you talking about yeah, the lady? Granny yeah, Granny Goodness. Yeah. So, she, yeah. so she's a humanoid person then. She's not a humanoid. She is she's a human. an old lady. Yeah, she's okay. a real old lady and everything. Um, so she's she's part of. Um, yeah, I, I, would, I would. It would have been. It would have been really exciting to see the whole Mister Miracle, Big Barda, you know, aspect of um, Apocalypse. So I guess we're gonna get that with um, Ava DuVernay's movie. You know, whenever that comes out, I know it's not gonna look anything like this, and it's supposed to have Dark Side in that movie. So it'd be really interesting to see how that comes out. But um. I mean, with this with this movie, um, um, you you really couldn't you really couldn't ask for a well with this extended version. I should say you couldn't really ask for the best version of what Zach was um, you know trying to do. He had to um, you know lay the groundwork to set up these other movies, which is a big tall task. You know, we we could, should have been having like a cyborg movie. I would still like to see that movie. That would rule. You know, it would be good. Um, <laughs> Yeah, really and, good, and, and we, we ended up getting a different Aquaman and we got a Wonder Woman movie, but the second movie was just god awful as far as I'm concerned. Um, but you know, yet and still, um, we don't have uh, a super another Superman movie on the horizon. Uh, Batman uh, Ben Affleck has left the project, <laughs> you know. <laughs> so um this this was this is the best version of what was what was gonna happen with these characters. You know, other than what Chris Nolan and, you know, uh, what we talked about, um, Tim Burton did with the Batman movies. Um, these are the best versions of what we're, what we're, what we're seeing so far. And uh, with Zach, you know, with this extended version, and everything, he did the best that he could with, 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 with what the mandate was coming down from the studio. He got his vision out. He got um, the fans really would thank God for the fans and everything that loves Zack Snyder, because if not for that, none of this is probably going to be possible for HBO max. So, I mean, it was, it was satisfying all around. 
GP, I'll bring this up to you guys, and and, and uh, Michael know this as well. Like we're saying this, this is Zack Snyder cutting all this stuff, and I love Christopher Nolan and everything he does. But we cannot absorb him for any blame of this because guess what? When that movie ended, who is the executive producer and the first name of credits who wrote across that? So his name is on that just as much as Zack Snyder. Even though we're saying this is Zack Snyder's cut, his name wouldn't have been on this. So I, I, I absorb him for as much blame as Zack Snyder for this movie being the way it was. He was part of this. This is his characters. He signed off on it. I mean, it's just like, you know, and we can draw parallels to Star Wars and how they do it, how Disney does things with Avengers. If this is trash, this would have never came out. So I would well, say Zack Snyder might have lit a fire, but Christopher Nolan, to me, is just as culpable for this movie as Zack Snyder is. And I will say with that, he was probably more hands-off on, you know, even though his name was on the movie, he's probably more hands-off than anything. I don't know. You know? Well, he created this whole thing. I think it's one of those more executive producer roles, like, Let's just yeah. give him credit for you know just being there type of thing. Oh, yeah. Well, well, he the one that that that's you know he he um did the story to Man of Steel. He the one that created the whole vibe and how this thing was going to go. <laughs> Zach, you know, being Zach, he he took you know his script and just went overboard and a lot of stuff. You know, we talked about like the the crazy scenes in Metropolis where they were just getting destroyed and everything. It probably was just one little scene with um, Chris Nolan's um, script that turned from one page to like about thirty pages in Zach's mind. You know, um, we got to stay in but, your wheelhouse. <laughs> <laughs> so it it would have been much different under Chris Nolan's direction. This whole thing versus what Zach has done. This became Zach mo- Zach's movies over time. So. Even though Chris name, you know, Chris Nolan's name is on it, you know, um, I think the fault lies with him not having enough input into, right. you know, how how these movies were going to go. And, yeah, and that goes on to my point. You know what happened with Christopher Nolan, right? So he wanted to be Kevin Feige for the Warner Brothers studio and handle all DC things. And then he found out that the check that they were giving him was nowhere near he wanted. And he had all his projects going on. It was the same thing they did with Zack Snyder. He had Interstellar coming out, and he had three or four other movies that he was producing and met working on. And they were like, hey, look, we need you 100% on board for this. He said no, and he took the back seat. And like you're saying, executive reduced. But this would have been a whole other way if they would have, A, gave him the money he wanted, and B, he would have put his ego aside and put some of those other projects on later and just follow this through. I, I don't think that, that, that Chris had that passion with these characters. Does, I think that would have been, no, that, that was does. in a wrong. He doesn't move. have the Kevin Feige, uh, you he know, doesn't. passion to bring it out. No, nope. Mm-mm, mm-mm. nope. So that would have been a, a disaster. I mean, the whole bottom line with, with, with this, this whole thing is that, um, we, we got a good version of these characters with, you know, with all the three of these movies, they weren't the best version of what they could be. And, you know, um, while Zach is, is a good director, um, to, to have him in charge of this universe is not the move. You need to get somebody, Warner Brothers needs to get a Kevin Feige, like I said before, into the, to, to, to shepherd this universe to um to 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 greater lengths and stuff because at this point what do they have now we got the batman coming out with um with um matt um i forget robert his name robert, yeah, yeah, robert, yeah, robert patton is him but yeah. but is matt um uh, he oh, directed the director? yeah. yeah he directed the planet of the ape stuff which was really great movies <laughs> um so well, he's in charge even comes back out though he, he was he, he showed up 40 pounds overweight so there's so on old what the Batman? I thought the production was over for. Yeah, them. I thought they. I thought they finished production. Uh, they they had to reshoot some stuff, but he came back during the Corona, the COVID nineteen, forty pounds overweight. Interesting. <laughs> um, but anyway, so you got that version coming out. Then you got whatever they're trying to do with the Flash, with the multiverse and stuff. I mean, they're they're going to try some stuff, and then you got Suicide Squad, which is. Even though it has the same characters, yeah. they said it's supposed to have nothing to do with what happened in the previous movie and stuff. Yeah, um, Shazam as well. Shazam going to be a big part. And then, yeah, Black, um, Black Adam. Black Adam. That's going to be a huge deal just because of The Rock. I mean, honestly, like that's he has to. He's going to have a higher profile because of who he is, for sure. Right. right? I mean, he's not just going to be some. But but do we want guy. these movies to interconnect connect like Marvel does, or do we want them to have? That's 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 Warner Brothers' internal battle. Do they want to be like Marvel, or do they want to do their own thing with these characters? Well, the overall picture, we always wanted to be like Marvel because Marvel's so successful, and that's what we've come accustomed to. We're used to seeing an end credit scene to link all the movies together. You know, have their independent movie, but then have Samuel Jackson come at the end of every movie. You know, yeah. you, you gotta you gotta have that interlink interlinked over the movies. 
And it's just, you, you don't have that one guy who's overseeing the whole production and seeing the big picture anymore. And that's DC is lacking that. And, mm. and Warner brothers won't commit to that. Yeah, they want, I mean, we'll never see an overall big dark, like something like apocalypse. That's a big, that's a big, big thing. That's a big, huge thing in the DC universe. Yeah, come on, just, we, got, we got to see, we got to see Thanos as well. We got to see Titan, right? Let's see. Yeah, that. yeah, yeah. So, so something that could span over like a multi, you know, multi, you know, characters, movies and stuff, like to plant seeds and everything and to come, you know, back into a big Justice League. I don't see how they can make another Justice League again. I don't know how that even happens, well, you know, and Justice League is their Avengers movie. I mean, they're Avengers. Like, how do you mess that up? Well, the first thing is I well, got to find six actors to stick on. Start with. Okay. Let's, you got to find six actors to keep their job. Yeah. <laughs> you got to think about this. I, I like to think about this movie in the context it deserves. And that's and that's forgetting about Marvel, right? Because it, you're right. It's not a fair comparison. They did such a great job that anything DC or Warner Brothers tries to do is essentially going to seem like a, like a copycat, which isn't fair to DC because they're the OGs, right? It's not fair. So let me add, let's posit a reality where... Uh, Robert Downey Jr., instead of catapulting himself to super wealth and uh, lifetime success, uh, it goes on a bender during Iron Man or something like that. Terrible. The movie ends up not really coming out. Now, let's talk about Justice League. Let's say this movie comes out and there is no Marvel. Is this the greatest superhero movie ever made? And what does that say about what Marvel has done? That's the second question, I guess. But what do you guys think? Like, What, what would the lack of that comparison do to your perception of this movie? Do you think you would think that this is a monumental triumph without something that is a 10 of 10 on the ledger? Or do you think this movie is always going to be sort of a, and for me, and I'll just say it, a seven and a half out of 10, that this is just as good as this guy can make yeah. these characters look and sound on film. This four hour version. Great. Great. Okay. If we were in a reality where the Avengers or MCU doesn't even happen, it's still coming out, right? Like maybe they're this, about to make that movie. This, yes. this, this four hour version, not the who seven scene crap, you know, no, that never happened. And that, that I never don't happened remember. and everything. No. I got clocked um, on this, the noggin in 2018. I don't know. This, this, <laughs> this is a triumph. You know, I, I, I would think that this is it right here. You know, um, except for maybe like you know they could clean up the end, the epilogue and everything. But this is this is a great version of what these characters could have been. And look, that's exactly what I asked Zack Snyder for. We talk about Zack a lot because we love his movies because we, we see so many of them and he does these genre things that we obviously love because we have these shows. And this is why we do Nerd Encyclopedia, really. I think a lot of this was Justice League. When we actually started talking, it was Batman v Superman, it was Justice League. All those movies were coming out. And so, you know, for me, this movie is just like, I can't believe they actually did the redo. I can't believe that that movie in 2017 was so bad that they made the whole movie over and literally I could barely tell there was overlap. Only a few times I was like, I kind of remember this scene. Every right. like, the rest of the four hours, I was like, I don't remember that. I don't remember any of this, right? I don't yeah, remember that. I I agree with that. I mean, it was such a completely different movie than from the like the original version. Like when Superman came out, you know, back to life, it, it, like that was one scene I remembered, and like like other than that, there's very little scenes uh, of of the same, and which was a good thing because that movie was such a horrible movie right. that it had to be a completely different movie to be good. And our first nerd encyclopedia bleep was about how bad, <laughs> how bad this movie was—a real, a real epoch for us. Um, you I, know, I have a question for you guys, real quick. Yeah. So, since DC took over these series, when was Metropolis and Gotham across the river? Because oh, I thought Gotham, they're across thought, the bay. <laughs> I thought Gotham was Chicago and Metropolis was New York, the Manhattan. The no, they've all, they've always been like right across like from each other, and again, the comic books at least, you know, in the movies, um, um, it's but they they've never really been like Chris Nolan, you know, filmed like the um the 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 Chicago um that's I mean, I the thought, Dark Knight yeah. movies in Chicago, so that's why you're probably thinking about that. But in comic, you know, lore and everything, they're right across. They're, they're right well, I just think of the Chicago thing as far as like it's darker, like the, the gang type mentality. I always mm -hmm. thought of like if I were thinking a real life Gotham City, I would think of Chicago, and I yeah. think Metropolis would be like Manhattan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's sort it's, of it's weird. This is a weird thing. This is something that's always struck me as weird. And anytime you know if they're that close together, why doesn't Superman know about Batman? Right. Like why doesn't anyone in Metropolis know about that? <laughs> And it's weird, like when you look at where they are canonically, they're on like the the coast of New Jersey. I think, I think Gotham City is actually canonically in Jersey. 
And it's not like Cape May. Like, there's actually different little topography in the DC. I mean, if you're going to go that route, why doesn't anybody know about Wonder Woman? She's been around since how long now? You know, because since 1984? Nobody, nobody, nobody was around for Wonder Woman. I mean, in World War One, who's going to so, so, so in 1984, so in 1984, when she reappeared, you know, how come um she's nowhere to be? She, she's in, in Batman. I don't I think anybody remembered what happened. I thought everybody... Really? Wonder Woman? Oh, no, I mean, like, now. yeah, at the end of the movie, he hypnotized everybody. <laughs> is that what happened Flash? at the end of the movie? Oh, yeah. No, yeah. Is that oh, what? Oh, hey, 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 Michael, I must have missed that. Is that what happened? At... He, they he, he To forget Wonder Woman? Is that the way they did that? Not to forget Wonder Woman, but they hit. They wouldn't have remembered him because they didn't remember what was going on because it wasn't a, it was a false reality that everybody was living in. Oh. They all got hit with a giant nerve. I'll take your word for it because I'm, I'm never going to watch I'm that movie again. This. I'm glad I skipped this one, guys. I'll tell oh, you. Oh, man. Just hearing about this is just making me like. And, you know, Wonder Woman's used right. to make. Because, I mean, make... think about it. I mean, Steve came back, but he wasn't Steve. He was somebody else. So yeah. how are you going to remember Wonder Woman if you didn't remember even being Steve? They just all woke up and was like, where am I? How did I get here? It's I 1984, that, guys. That, that 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 makes sense. Um, I'm never. I'm. I'll take your word for it because I don't think I'm gonna watch that movie over again. <laughs> yeah, that that was one of the things. I was just like, no, this can't happen like that. Hey, tired of my cat. <laughs> so, okay. All right, guys. So so we're coming. We're coming to. The, I'm not gonna make the, our, our poor listeners sit through four hours of this. That's enough. We, we've done. <laughs> this has been enough homework for one week between the nine episodes of uh, of Star Wars: The Clone Wars on CBBS that I'm due that are gonna be good. I'm sure. We're super stoked about that. So check us out on Carbonite Bounty BS on our other end of the feed for Nerd Cyclopedia. Transcontinental, as always, we want to see your uh, feedback. We want to hear from you. Head over to our, our Facebook groups. Send us a line at nerds at nerdcyclopedia.com if you want to talk to us about this stuff or you just want to tell us off. And look, you can come on to us however you want. That's how that's how we say it here. Oh, well, thank, you, Trent, thank you, Trent, for uh, joining us. Thank you, Team Mitch, for guest starring. Yes, sir. Thank you. We'd love to have you back on some more stuff. Yep. Appreciate it, guys. Thank you. All right. You, any final words, uh, T. Mitch? You got anything else you want to tell our our shared listeners about this movie? I uh, I really want to see. Um, to be honest, them just keep it going. Find a way to make peace with Zack Snyder and release like like Mike said. I want to see the ending. I want to see Dark Side. I want to see the invasion. I, I want to keep it going. So find a way to reconcile and, and make this happen because it, based on their sales alone it's it shows that people want it michael i i agree with trying right there you know like th this is a movie to make me forget about the whole joss wheaton uh debacle so i mean i enjoyed the the four-hour movie even though you had to take breaks in it so i'm glad there's actually chapters in the movie go to walmart <laughs> target <laughs> it was right, a giant so, zoom so meeting time but i mean yeah, I'm just glad that they're going to force Mar uh, force uh, Warner Brothers' hand in this. And, you know, when, when things make a lot of money and make a lot of sense, you know, it, it, they somehow they'll find a way and come together. Awesome, awesome. And DP? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm with Michael. Um, I think this is a way to troll um, Warner Brothers to, to drum up enough support to, to, to keep it moving, keep it going. Um, I would love for, out of spite, just for this to be successful, uh, huh. so it's so successful that Warner's just realized, okay, well, we need to to placate and do something because we want to. We love money, you know. We do love <laughs> that, you know. So let's try to find some way to keep it going and you know bring Ben back and just you know try it, you know. If they want to do Injustice League, you know, Injustice, you know, as a um, second movie or something, they don't have to do Zach's complete vision, but just continue with the actors. Um, you know, you could still have the Robin Patterson and his own universe and stuff, but try to keep somehow keep this universe going. I I agree with all this, but for me, I just I don't think it's going to happen because I just I know it's a lot of money, but I want to see them move forward with these characters. And if that means doing something like an Earth Two, where Superman's got the gray hair or something like that, where it's just a little bit different, right? I think there's so much room in the canon for them to pull something like that off. I, if they did it, I wouldn't be I wouldn't roll my eyes. I wouldn't think that. You know this movie, like lost some of its um, like some of its verve because you know we have we're redoing stuff. I I, I just don't see them. I don't see them making another version of this. I think the throwing in Marshall Manhunter that sort of stuff was them saying that's it for this. I want them to make me 
uh, a movie where Bat- like Batman and Superman meet organically, right? It's an accident. They both go to stop the same thing, and that is your little post credit sequence, right? I want to see that. I want to see Batman and Superman meet under circumstances that don't involve their mother's names, because that's weird. We don't talk. I mean, what's my mom's name, uh, DP? Do you know my mom's name? My mom's first name? You don't know, right? So why would you? We don't talk about that stuff. It's, Mar- it's Martha. Right, right. It so Martha. Martha. <laughs> it is Martha. So um, what, 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 one thing I do want to say, um, yeah. now that you, you're bringing something up there, um, one of the things that makes Marvel so <laughs> great is, as far as like what Kevin Feige does, is that the actors seem like they love, they love, um, you know, acting in those movies and stuff. They're willing to, you know, to look, move look their at schedules. Yeah, yeah. yeah, look at it, look, look at the checks, but also look at the, how they relate to each other when they're, they, they act like they're, they, it's a special thing to be in these movies. DC actors and stuff, they don't look like they have as much fun. They may be getting paid a lot, but they don't seem like they have as much fun being in the movies as much as Marvel, like Don Cheadle and Chris Evans. These guys hang out with each other outside of the thing. You know, we see them in like um, um, interviews and stuff, like they've been around each other for like, you know, years and stuff, which they have. You know, they, they act like they're family. You don't have that same type of dynamic on the um, Warner Brothers side. They act like it's a work, like it's work you know, to, to be involved with these movies. That's why the chemistry in the Marvel movies is so much better than what you get in DC stuff is because behind the scenes, the, the atmosphere is just, it's, awesome. it's just that much, it's just awesome. You know, you love to be with them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I got one final point to any, I know Michael will really like this. So if Hitch is saying, let's cancel this stuff. So what, if Warner Brothers wants to make this right and beat Marvel, they need to grab Bizarro um, Solomon Grundy, and they need to do an anti-hero movie and do something against the Justice League. That's the only way they can fix it. If they grab all the villains and do a villain mashup, I and did like that. Do that. Get I, Reverse I Flash. Get the uh, correct. Oh yeah. Yes. Uh, what, 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 yes. What's the yes. dumb Superman? The yeah. 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 Let's, let's just get the Legion of Doom. Just they make a Legion to. of Doom yeah, movie. That's, uh-huh. that's the only way they can fix it. Uh, the Batman, I'm, I'm, I'm all for that. The rogues I'm gallery will that. save them as it always does. And that is, very deep. <laughs> you know, it's one they of have the a things deep, DC they has. have a deep rogue bench. Yes, all they right. do. Yes. So, so that's going to be it for us this week. Next week, you know, I'm going to just call it the NCFS will be back next week. And we are going to talk about, and you, you guys are going to lose it about this episode one and episode two of the Falcon and the winter soldier. We will be back next week with that. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the show. If you liked it, throw us a subscription. Uh, for the rest of the Nerd Psychos on the Nerd Psycho Comic Flick Show, I am Hitch, and we just end the show. See you later. Nerd Cyclopedia.